Um, well, it would be nice if you could ask me some hard questions. Um, uh, you really got them all right there, and in, in one in one question, you got all the hard ones. So uh, let me start with uh, a couple of them, and we can go from there. Uh, I think one of the most important things that we've learned is that every situation is different. And when I say that, I don't mean it as some kind of a corporate cop-out. And I apologize to the interpreter again uh, for the idiomatic phrase, but some kind of corporate speak, some way that we can get out of actually giving you a straight answer. But it's true, you cannot compare China and our situation there to any other country that we've dealt with. Ultimately, the reason that we withdrew our service there and we actually redirected it through Hong Kong, and I can get into a long and very, very dull explanation of what that means, is a combination of things. First, it was increasingly difficult for us to deal with the censorship regime in China. Uh, last year, for example, in the spring, YouTube was blocked, completely blocked by the Chinese government. Then we had something called the Green Dam incident, in which the Chinese tried to insist that every computer that was coming into China had software, uh, be loaded with software that would prevent the youth of China from seeing harmful content. Uh, we were identified as the reason for the need for that uh, new software because we were seen as the great por uh, purveyors of pornography. Uh, the Chinese, I would note, did not mention that Baidu, which has the main market share in China, has just as much pornography as we do. Not that it's a good thing, it's just they singled us out. Uh, there was increasing pressure on our staff over the months, and then in December, as those of you who have followed this case know, uh, there was a major attack, a cyber attack, on our infrastructure. All of this together led to our decision to reverse what we had decided a few years ago, which was that it would be worthwhile to engage the Chinese public. Uh, this is not a decision that on its surface makes a great deal of business sense to most people. Uh, it is, however, a decision that makes sense within the way that our company looks at the internet and looks at what's important to maintain in terms of principle and also in terms of basic freedoms. So we decided to do this a different way and no longer participate in what the Chinese have established as a regime of self-censorship. Uh, can we apply that case to other countries? The answer to that, I'm afraid, is no. Why? Because of the scale of the problem in China, because of our specific experience in China, the fact that the government came after us, uh, because of the extent of their censorship regime. There are all sorts of things that I could add up that would, uh, that would separate this from others. Let me compare it, for example, to the situation that we faced with YouTube <coughs> excuse me, in Thailand. Uh, in Thailand, we faced a situation where a Thai citizen outside of the country posted a half a dozen or so uh, videos to YouTube that uh, were offensive uh, to the image of the king. There's a law in Thailand uh, called the Les Majeste Law that says that you cannot insult the king. As a result of those videos, the Thai government decided to shut down YouTube. Now, to make a very long story short, over the course of several months, we negotiated with that government, and the end result was that we would take down the ability, not take down, we would remove the ability for Thai viewers to see those videos and in return the Thai government would allow YouTube to be seen. So everything but those handful of videos. Now, some people here in this audience and people around the world criticized us because they said this is not true free expression. And our answer to that is we can't be perfect. This is the real world. And in the real world, 
sometimes you have to make sacrifices. And in this case, we felt it was worth, in, in quotes, turning off those six videos in order for people in Thailand to be able to see the rest of YouTube. So our goal, our principles here are pretty simple. We want to maximize the ability of people to have free expression, and we also want to maximize their access to information that they might not otherwise see. Uh, another of your questions had to do with news and newspapers and the difference between the rules that are applied to newspapers and the traditional media and the new media. Uh, no, we do not edit the way that the traditional media edits. That's not what we do at Google News or at any part of Google. But we do edit in one way. When you look on Google News, you can't see it, but all of the sources of news that are cited, the newsletters, the wire services, the newspapers, the websites, the radio stations that have websites, all of that has been looked at to make sure that we're not uh, including any kind of news sources that are in fact fronts for political causes or the kinds of things that would not be really considered news. You'll note, for example, that there are almost no blogs whatsoever on Google News. Uh, that's our way of adjusting to the new reality of online news, to give people reputable sources, but to give them ideas from around the world so that they can see different sources, different continents, how different people look at the news. Uh, so that's the answer to two of your questions. Uh, I won't get into the privacy discussion quite yet. I think we should keep it separate and try to uh, delve into it as carefully as possible. Uh, let me say simply that privacy is the most difficult question that any, that any internet company faces. If we do not have trust of our users, we have nothing. And it's only if we give those users control over their data and give them the chance to say what they want us to see and how long we can see it, that we can ultimately maintain that trust. And that's our goal. Do we always do it perfectly? Of course not. Uh, I would be lying to you if I said that we did. But is it our intention? Surely it is our intention to protect people's privacy as much as possible.